This is an ASUS router. It's an N300 standard router. And the model is hopefully on the box here. Oh, stop. Is it on the front? Oh, it's the RT N12 ASUS 3-in-1 wireless N300 router. So this is the router right here. And what we're going to do in this video is we're going to plug everything in and get it on the internet. So if you've been having trouble with this router or just don't know where to do what to do from the start, uh, hopefully this video will help you out because I have a trick that we're going to use if your router is not getting on the internet for some reason. And we're just going to do everything from the beginning. So the first thing I'd like to do with the router is plug in the modem to it. So the other end of this cable is plugged into my modem in a different room and the cable runs in here. And the modem goes into this blue, the blue port right here, the blue internet port. So I'm going to plug my modem into that with one hand, if I have some talent. There we go. You hear that convincing warm and fuzzy click? That, and we want to plug in the power. Power's not going to reach very far, but I think we'll be all right plug in the power and now we'll plug in there's this cable that comes with the router and I'm going to use this to plug into the laptop here so close that on my laptop so I usually you can plug in it into any of these yellow ports it does not matter I always choose port one just because it makes sense for me to choose port one I don't know, it just makes sense to me. That's the reason I do it. But any of them will work. And the other one goes in your computer. Your computer will probably have the Ethernet port in a different spot. But that's where mine is right there. So now we have everything plugged in. We plugged three things into the router. The power, the modem, and the computer. Now that everything's plugged in, we're going to press this little power button here. It's right next to where you plugged in the, the power cable. There's a power button. We're going to go ahead and press that. Yep. Press it. And I see the lights come on. So if you didn't buy this, this router brand new and you didn't just take it out of the plastic and out of the box, like if you bought it secondhand, um, I would recommend resetting it. So if... You can even do it if you bought it brand new if you want. So, uh, but I'm not going to do it, but I'll explain what I mean. Now that it's plugged in and turned on and everything, um, I would go ahead and press that little reset button down there if you can see it. Basically, you have to take your pen with the tip out and just kind of put it in there and hold it in there until the lights start doing different things. Like you'll see, they'll probably turn off or the power light might turn off. You'll see, it'll do something noticeably different. But since we're not doing that, I'm just gonna leave the router like that because my, well, maybe I don't have to. It looks all ugly. It looks all ugly. Let's, make it look a little bit better okay so the router's all plugged in it's got my fingerprints all over it this is a beautiful router by the way it's got this nice texture on here but anyways notice how we didn't do anything else other than plug it in and i moved it around a little bit but i actually want to go over one more thing on the bottom of your router you'll see a sticker with some information on it almost every router has these um you'll see what we want to what we're concerned with right here is the MAC address. So if you're plugging this router in, if this is the first time you've ever used a router on your at your house or wherever it is you're setting it up right now, if this is a brand new internet connection, you might not need to worry about this part. But if you already have your internet set up at your house and you and you just bought this router and you're trying to set it up and you can't get on the internet for some reason, then or if you're just replacing or any router, if you had a router set up and you're now using this, you may need to do this little trick. So notice we have this sticker with the MAC address on there. 
we want that MAC address from the old router, not this one. We want the MAC address from the old router. So I went to my old router and I wrote down my MAC address on this piece of paper because I'm gonna need it. I'm gonna need it to get on the internet. So notice it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve characters. Same is that, but it's not the same MAC address. It's this is the Come on, focus. This is the MAC address from my old router that was online and working before. So we're gonna need this to do a trick later. So, I haven't done anything on my computer yet. I've just been showing you about this router. Meanwhile, while this router was re uh, starting up, I had everything plugged in and I turned it on and then it, whoop, it went over and did something on my computer. It opened my browser and it gave me this setup page. So let's go ahead and teleport into the computer. Now that we're here on the computer, like I said, this it brought up my browser automatically and brought this up. But if it didn't do that for you, then all you gotta do is open up your favorite browser. It can be Chrome, it can be Internet Explorer. Can, I'm using Edge. Just go in there and type in router.asus.com. You don't need to worry about the rest of this stuff. All you need is http colon slash slash router.asus.com. Just type that in your browser and hit enter and it should go to this page. So now that we're here, we're just gonna go ahead and click go and see what happens. All right. So you can set your router administrative pass, uh, name and password here. This is what we're gonna use to log into the router uh, administrative interface. This is not for Wi-Fi. This is not for Wi-Fi. This is only for logging into your settings to change the settings in the router. So I'm gonna leave it as admin and I'm gonna make my password admin and retype it again. I recommend not using admin because that's a really crappy password uh, use something that is unique to you. I'll just go ahead and show it. It's the same thing. Admin, admin, admin. So my name is admin. My password is going to be admin. This little thing is nothing. It's just a picture, so don't worry about it. Go ahead and click next. The new password is the same as the system default password. We strongly recommend you set a more complex password. Okay, I'll use admin123 then. Admin123. 123. It doesn't let us use admin. Okay, next. This part may work for you. It's not going to work for me. I already know that ahead of time. But we're going to go through the steps. And for some of you work, and for some of us, we'll have to do an extra step. So what we're going to do is select the first option, automatic IP DHCP. For most of us, that's what we're going to select. If you need to select one of these other options, you probably know because your ISP told you the information to use. But for the rest of us, we're going to choose automatic because that's what most of us need. Start to detect your connection type. Turn off the cable DS modem. This, I, I would recommend doing what they say. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to turn off my cable modem just because I know it's going to work. But... I would recommend doing what's going to say, but again, maybe it'll work for you because it works for me when I don't do all this stuff. So I'm going to go to, I'm not going to do this and I'm going to go to next. Turn off the cable DSL mode. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go to detect again. Again, I, I expect to have errors at the end. Or I expect it not to work. I expect to not be able to get on the internet. Unable to connect to the internet. Okay, just like I expected. Some of you, it might have worked. If you're just installing this router on a new internet connection for the first time, it probably worked for you. But for those of us who already had a router set up, and now we're trying to install this new router, we're going to have issues. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to wireless setting. And this is going to set our wireless network. This is the name of your wireless network. And then you have to have a wireless key. 
So it says enter a network key between eight and 63 characters, letters, numbers, or a combination. So I'm just gonna say Wi-Fi password one, two, three. I, I wouldn't use that password if I were you. That's a really crappy password. Use something that's, I don't know, more creative. Like for like what's more creative? Like it has to be letters, numbers. It can't be like special characters or anything. So I would do like, for Wi-Fi, I would type in like W, I would use capital W, 1F1, and that's like represents Wi-Fi, and then capital P, um, A, 55, W, 0, R, D, 1, 2, 3, or something like that. Just make it, make it creative. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to use... Wi-Fi password one two three, only because I'm just making a quick video. I'm not using this router for real. So apply. Completed, and here's a summary of the settings. We'll go to finish. And at this point, like I said, some of you, if you're setting this up for the first time on a brand new internet connection, on a brand new ISP, like if the guy came out and you set up and paid your fee for your ISP, and this is the first router you set up, it'll probably work for you. You could probably go out here and Google, and it'll probably work. But for some of us, we're replacing a router. So we need to do an extra step. So we're going to do something called MAC address spoofing. So, remember that MAC address that we wrote down from our old router that was previously working? We're going to use that. We're going to go down here to WAN, W-A-N, for Wide Area Network. And if you once you go to that page, the WAN page, you scroll all the way down, and it's gonna, there's a box here for MAC address. Now, conveniently, my MAC address is already typed in here, but you're going to, so this, this MAC address is the one from your old router that was previously working. Remember, it came off the sticker or the box. Now, if you can't get that MAC address or you don't know how to find it or you don't understand or you just, it doesn't work or whatever, it's not the end of the world. All you have to do is call your internet service provider and tell them that you bought a new router and they'll hook it up for you. They'll reset that MAC address thing and it, it's not a problem. Even if you do have this MAC address, you can still call them and you know do it, I don't know, I guess it's more proper to do it that way or whatever. But this works, this is a quick workaround for those of us who don't like talking to people on the phone. That's basically why I do it this way. I just don't care to call them and talk to people, but um, yeah, you put your old router's MAC address in here do not click this button. Do not click this button because it's going to erase what you put in there and put your computer's MAC address in there and that's not what you want. So once you have that MAC address, go ahead and click apply. This is called MAC address cloning or MAC address spoofing. So if you your friends or family are having issues getting their router on the internet, you can jump in here and go type in the old router's MAC address if they have one and be like, oh, look at this cool. And you'll look all smart, like you're saving the day. And then you'll look like a, I don't know, you'll be a hero. So now that we did that, we should be able to go to the network map page to tell us that we're, oh, internet status is connected. Now we can go up here and refresh Google. And look at that, we're on the internet. Congratulations. Now you learned, hopefully you learned something from this video. Uh, I know it's the whole MAC address spoofing is confusing to some people or some people don't even know that you can do that, but it's a very nifty trick. So hope you learned something and thank you so much for watching my video. Have a great day.